Today, I'm going to show you how to recreate Iman Ghazi 3D editing style using Final Cut Pro. Alright guys, let's get started. So this is the video we're going to use, just drag and drop in the timeline. And I'm going to provide you guys with this video, link will be down there below. You can get your hands on it and practice along. So we're going to make a duplicate of this option and drag upwards. Click on the down video, press V to disable it. Now click on the top video and go to the effect section side. Scroll down and select mask and key. We're going to use magnetic mask. Just click on that, drag and drop on the top video. This is a great feature from Final Cut Pro and I've already done a video on that. I'll leave a card up here, also down here on how to use this very tool. We're going to use this pen tool to select the subject or the object we want to cut out. So I can select more of that and right there you can see it did pretty good job. Now we can click on analyze to track it forward and also track it backwards. Now just click on done and you can see it did great job. So from here, just click on the video and press V to disable that. We're going to use that later on in this tutorial. Now let's start with the green square shape. Go to the titles and generator sidebar on your left. Scroll down, click on elements. We're going to use shapes, just drag and drop in the timeline. So with the shape selected, go to the right side. We're going to do some changes to the parameters. With circle, let's go for square shape. With the full color, I'm going to go for green. I already have it here. And there's one trick about this. Whenever you use a color picker to select a color that you want or you have it, you can just drag it on this side and it's going to save for you. So in the future, anytime you want to use it, you can just click on that and it's going to give you that color. So I'm going to use the green color. Close that. Outline, I'm going to go for white. So I can go for all the colors. Select white and close that. With the width, I can go for somewhere 32. And you can see it gives this nice border around it. Now let's go to roundness. On the top, I want to increase that a bit. I can go for somewhere 10 to 15. You can look at the edges. It gives these nice shapes around it. Now go to Video Inspector. Click on that. We're going to reduce the size of this. Looks too big. So we're going to go for somewhere 70 or 75%. Now make a duplicate of that shape. Press option and drag upwards. So there's the one on top. Let's go back to this side. Click on that. We're going to change the color of that. So select this. And this time around, we'll go for black color. Close this. With this, we don't want the outline color. So we're just going to take it off. And also with that one, we don't want the shadow showing. So we can take opacity of that shadows down. Now go to the effects section side. Click on mask and key in. This time around, we're going to use graduated mask, just drag and drop on it. I've done a video on masking tools. I'll leave a video down there below. You can check on it and see how to use when it comes to mask tools. So with this, we're going to work with the parameters. Let's just rotate it this way. Bring it down and rotate it more and spread it. We just want to darken this down part a bit. So I'm going to stretch it a bit and move this down. So when you look, we have this side looking a bit darker than the top side. Now time to bring in the text. We're gonna go to the titles and generator side, scroll up and click on titles. I'm gonna use basic title for this, drag and drop in the timeline. So from here, go to the right side, click on this. Let's change the title and write in what you wanna write. Then we're just going to break it. Let's go to this side, break it this way and break it this way once again, just to have something like this in the timeline. Also with the font style, I'm going to change that. I'm going to go for monster art, just select that. And then I'm going to go for semi bold italic, then drag it and place it at the top. And also with the alignment, make sure you select center. So it's going to be right in the center. And now we need to animate that to come in and that's where I wish Apple could introduce more animations for us and also with the curves. Softwares like CapCut already have those things on and I don't know why Final Cut Pro is taking them this long to introduce that. So I'm going to show you guys one way to do that. We're going to go to the effects section side, tap on Tap 5A, that's my favorite animator that I use. It's free. I'll leave a link down there for you guys. 
just drag and drop on the text file. Let's go to somewhere, the beginning side, and then let's go to the video inspector side. So from here, we're gonna use in animation, we're gonna change it to float from bottom. It's gonna come from the bottom of the screen. Then we can go for one second. Then with the in scale, I can go for somewhere 75. I want it to start somewhere from this side. And then when I play and show you guys how it looks like. And also with this animator, it comes with motion blur right here. If you want to increase that, you can go up a bit. And this is really a cool tool. Now we're going to bring in a line. There's the trick. Go to titles on the left side. Drag basic title in the timeline. Let me drag it up to this side so we can see what we're doing. Then go to the right side. Let's delete the title. And let's type in underscore few times. Don't type in dashes. Underscore is going to make it work. So now I can change it to bold and maintain the font style. Then I want it to be up a bit here and move towards this side. Now with that tool, we need to animate that to come in. We're going to use tab 5A, just drag and drop on it. Then go to this side, the video inspector side. And this time around, we're going to change the in animation to float from right. And when you look at it, it's going to come from the right side. I made a mistake. It's float from right. So I'm going to go to float from right. And when you look at it, it's going to come in from this side of the screen. Now let's change that and make that one second. And all these animations come without animation, which we don't need that now. So let me take this out animation off so I can go to none. Let me do the same with this very test file. The first one we created. Let's change that to none too. Let's make a duplicate of this line text, drag it upwards. Now with that one selected, let's go to the side. Let's delete the underscore and type in dot. And because we are using this font style, it's going to look like a square shape, exactly what we want. Let me make it bigger. Then let's scroll down on rotation on the Z as is. Let's rotate it to this way. Then I can just drag it and place it at this side. And with that one, let's change the animation on that. I can go for something like blur in. So select that and go to blur in. So now when I play and show you what we have so far, it comes in nice and clean. Now we need to create a compound clip of all these files. I'm going to select all option G. Then I'm going to name it all file. Now the fun part. So with this 3D, let's drag this file in the middle of these two video files. Then let's enable this, press V, click on this and press V to enable the two. Now click on this very file. And now on the X axis, let's move it to this side of the screen. So I want it to be something like this. And then on the Y axis, I can bring it up a bit. So now how to achieve this 3D look, I'm gonna use one plugin. 3D orientation. So this is from Rhinango, very cool plugin. I'm going to leave a link down there below. It is free. God bless him for this very tool. It makes your life so easy. So with this, I'm just going to drag and drop on this very file. Then when you go to the right side, that's where you can play with the parameters. With this tutorial, I'm going to play with only the Y rotation. So when you go to this side, you can see what it's doing on the screen. It can go full 360. So with this, I think I can go for something like 43%. And the X axis, when you look at it, it's going to give you this look. But with this tutorial, I'm going to leave it at zero. Now we need to animate that to come in nicely behind me. So with that selected, let's go to the effect section side and let's search for tab 5A. Click on that, then drag and drop on this file. Let's change the in animation. We're going to go for float from bottom and then we're going to increase it to one second. And with the in scale this time around, let's take it to 200%. So it's really going to start from the bottom of the screen. Now let me play and show you guys how it looks like. It's coming nicely behind the subject. So now we're going to add out animation with this. So just like that, let me reduce this a bit to something like this. Take my playhead to somewhere here. Let's change it from float to right to float to bottom. And with the out animation, you can increase that. 
but I think I can go for somewhere 7.7 seconds. Then with the out skill, I'm gonna take it to 200 once again. Now when I play and show you guys how it looks like, it comes in, it stays for a while, and then on this side, it goes out smoothly behind the subject. All right, guys, that's all for today. Catch you in the next one. Peace.